algebraic expressions. Pause, try the lesson opener. Check your work. In every field of study, in every job, in every activity, every sport, we have a certain vocabulary that goes along with it. Heck, even playing a game, there's certain words that we use at times for certain games. So when we're studying math, there's a particular set of vocabulary that goes along with that. And when we know that vocabulary, we can effectively communicate with one another. It makes us stronger, better mathematicians. Let's identify some key terms for this section. Term is the first one. An expression that is a number, variable, or a product of a number in one or more variables. Example, 7y, 13xy, anything that is being multiplied together. Coefficient, the numerical factor of a term. So in our examples of 2x and negative 4y, 2 or negative 4 would be our coefficients. A constant term is a term without a variable. For example, 7, negative 3, 0 0.5. And a constant is just that, a constant. We don't identify it as a coefficient. Like terms have the same variables raised to the same power. So 2x squared y plus 5x squared y. Same variable, same power. 2xy plus 5x squared y are not the same and would not be able to be combined. Let's practice identifying coefficients, variables, constant, and number of terms. First example, 6t plus 3f minus k. Coefficients, 6, 3, and what's in front of the k? Eh, a negative 1. Variables, well, I've got a t, an f, and a k. Constants, all of my terms have variables, so I don't have any constants. Be sure to write none. Don't leave it blank. I won't know you know. Number of terms. I have three. Okay, you understand what we're asking for now, right? Go ahead and try the next two examples. Pause, but here's a good hint. Be sure and simplify before you identify the pieces. That means combine like terms. So simplifying first, we added the 4ab and the 7ab for 11ab. Were you tempted to combine the 5x squared and the 2x? I hope not because those x's are not raised to the same powers, so they are not like terms. Now, identifying from our simplified version, we have coefficients 11, negative 5, 2, variables a, b, x. We do have a constant, negative 3, and number of terms 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Last, look at C. Do we have anything to combine? Can we simplify? Yes, those Y terms. So negative 4Y plus 11Y is 7Y. Simplified form, 3X plus 7Y plus 9. What are the coefficients? 3 and 7. Variables, X, Y, constant 9. How many terms? 3. What's the simplified form of the expression? Well, let's look at the first set of parentheses. We have A's and B's. Are any of them the same variables raised to the same powers? Well, it looks like 3b squared plus 6b squared are like terms. So let's go ahead and simplify that. In the next part of the expression, we have minus x plus 4y. Well, that means we have to distribute that minus sign. I like to think of it as a negative 1 so that I don't forget to distribute it to everything inside those parentheses. So we get negative x minus 4y. Likewise, we're going to distribute the 5 and get 15x minus 5y. We didn't have to be as careful there because it was a positive 5 that we were distributing. We've already simplified the terms that have a's and b's in them. They cannot be combined any further. But now we do have some x terms that can be combined and some y terms. So let's go ahead and do that. And we have our simplified version of the expression. Number four, it looks like a student simplified the given expression to p squared q plus 3p minus 5q. Did they do it correctly? Take a moment to simplify the expression. p squared q plus p minus 5q is what it simplifies to. So was the student correct? Nope, they made a mistake. They got 3p, probably because they didn't distribute that negative sign. Remember PEMDAS? parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. 
All right, let's practice. We have a problem on steroids. When we say parentheses, we look for anything in any grouping symbol. Sometimes it's brackets. Next, we would go and evaluate anything with an exponent and then multiply and divide. But remember, one's not more important than the other. So you go in order from left to right. If a division problem comes before a multiplication problem, you do that one from left to right. Same thing with add, subtract. You'll see what I mean in this example. First, we look for parentheses or any grouping symbol. And we see that we do have a set of parentheses, four minus three squared. Inside the parentheses or grouping symbols, we also have to follow order of operations. So we must do the exponent first. So then I have four minus nine, which is negative five. Now let's look for any other part of this problem that has an exponent. Well, six squared, six squared is 36. All right, double check. Yep, we've taken care of parentheses and exponents. The next thing is multiply and divide in order from left to right. The first part of that is one half times 36. Well, that's 18. Then I see minus a negative five. Well, that's like negative one times negative five, which is positive five, so a plus five. Then we have plus 14. Well, I can't work on addition or subtraction yet. 14 divided by two, times five in order left to right. So the first part of that is 14 divided by two, which is seven, and then seven times five, 35. Now let's go back and take care of addition or subtraction in order from left to right. Well, it's all addition this time, so let's just go ahead and add. 18 plus five plus 35, 58. If we know x equals four and y equals negative two for this first one, let's evaluate by plugging in x and y. So exponents first, four squared. But what the heck is going on with that negative? Do I square it also? No, just the x is being squared and x is four. So only the four is being squared. What should I do with the negative in front of it? Well, think of it as a negative one. Negative one times the quantity four squared. So negative one times 16, negative 16. So continuing with multiplication, two times four times negative two, and remember, we can multiply in any order, commutative property of multiplication. So two times two is four, times another four is 16. We have a negative, so we're gonna have negative 16 plus negative 16 minus seven, and now we're ready to add and subtract in order from left to right. Negative 16 plus negative 16 is negative 32. Minus seven, we get a negative 39. You should have the hang of it now. Pause, try the next two, and come back and check your answer. Take a moment to check your work. For B, did you get negative 10? That was really similar to A. C, you had to be a little bit careful because this time we're squaring a negative number. And it might be tempting to just see that negative times a negative and think positive automatically, but go in order, PEMDAS. So no parentheses to take care of, exponents, negative one squared, negative one times negative one is positive one. And then that gets multiplied by that negative one in front. So for that first term, we now have negative one. From there, we continued and we added a negative 10 minus seven. Your final answer should be negative 18.